Welcome to part four of how to become best friends forever with the Z Modeler brush. Okay, we're going to use a reference. So in the texture palette, go to import, go to your folder, wherever your images are that you're going to use. Once it's in the texture palette, choose it. And then this button here loads it into Spotlight. Once you have an image in Spotlight, the next time you choose images, they'll open directly into Spotlight. They'll go right past the texture palette. So that's always handy. So I'm not going to go over all the controls of the Spotlight dial. This one deletes. <laughs> Once you pick an image, this will change its scale. This one will rotate. Another notable one that you probably should know about is the spotlight radius. When you have this turned up, and then when you hit Z to get rid of the controller, your image will disappear. And the reason that is, is that it's so that you can texture your model and see how you're doing. So Z again to get the, the controller back. And we're going to turn the spotlight radius off so that when you hit Z, it's still there because we're going to use it as reference. Also, another thing about Spotlight is that, let's say you want to sculpt on this model right here. Um, I'm trying to sculpt on it here and it's not doing anything. To go up to Brush, Samples, Spotlight Projection, turn that off. And now you'll be able to sculpt your model. Bring this back with Z. And I'm just zooming in to examine this. When I first did this, I was thinking this was six-sided shape right here. The only six-sided shape I can see on this tuning peg is right above the screw threads right there shrink this back down. The feature I really like about Spotlight is you pick your image. This is the paint feature right here. If you want to move the controller you choose the inside circle there. You need to switch the color from white to black and then holding control tap on the background. What it's doing is turning the background into pure black and in the document pure black on an image will turn it transparent. Let's say you have UVs on your model and you texture it with something that's pure black you're going to see right through it. Scale this back down, move it over where it's not too obtrusive. Let me scale it up a little more, I guess. Z to get rid of the controller. Switch the color back to white. And we're going to import a cylinder. Go to the Initialize palette. Let's turn on Polyframe so you can see what's going on. H divide, I'm, let's take it to 6. And the V divide, we just take it all the way down as far as it'll go. The X, about 25. Y, 25. So now B, Z, M will bring the Z modeler brush. Oh, I need to make it a polymesh 3D. It's already in insert mode, so put some edge loops on here. That's a new function in ZBrush 4R7. You can turn the polyframe off and on when you have polyframe mode on, or you can turn the color off and on. Hover over a face and spacebar. Polygroup, poly loop. Holding the pen down, tap Alt, and again. You want to copy a polygroup, click on the model and hold down, and then hit Shift, and that copies the, the polygroup. I'm going to change this back to Q Mesh, turn it to Polygroup Island, and I need to put in Edge Loop here. Now, I still need different polygroups on these. Not necessarily. I could have it in Q-Mesh mode and change that to Poly Loop and then be able to Q-Mesh it that way. I actually need this to go that direction. And change this to Poly Group Island, the Q-Mesh. D for dynamic subdivision. Shift D, bring it back out. And I'm going to put in Poly Loop there. On the edge, I want to slide it and edge loop complete like this. Take this in more. Back into insert for the edge mode. Alt. Now, hover over the edge and go into crease, complete edge loop. Okay, these points here that look like pins sticking out of the model. When I first saw this version of ZBrush, I thought those were control points, like for how you would control a Bezier curve. You can move them around and they will alter the model shape. But what they are is actually the points and the geometry. It's showing you where the edges of the model are if it wasn't in subdivision mode. If you look at this point down here in the corner, when I come out of it, you'll see that it's right where the geometry is in actuality. 
Now we need to go into crease, just single edge mode. Need to go out of dynamic subdivision mode. And go into complete edge loop. Single edge. Why don't you want to stand up right? The brush is stubborn sometimes. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Before I forget here. Polygroup island. I'm going to make these smaller for sake of keeping things organized. And increase that one. Now, this piece here. Start pulling it out, and then I'm going to hit Control to break it off. And in Tool Palette, Display Properties, turn Double on. Pull that in from the inside like that. Go to Insert. And you use Temporary Polygroup. I don't know if it's any faster to polygroup. Switch back to QMesh, Polygroup Island. If you don't want it to snap, you can switch to Extrude Polygroup Island. Edge, Scale, Edge Loop Complete. Geometry looks a little wonky there for some reason. Back into Q mesh. Hold shift to just move it. Holding shift. Hmm, got a problem. What is going on here? Oh, okay. That flipped geometry for one thing. I see. Okay, I'm going to go back in time. Sometimes it's best just to go backwards when you have a problem like this because it just compounds and you can't get it fixed. Let's split hidden. Alt. Okay, that's what we want. The edge loops are making it do that. What this means is that we're going to have to use a cylinder. In the Z, about yay big. Inner radius, like that. Okay, make poly mesh. Here we're going to insert. And there it is. Get a solo mode. Scale it down. Transpose move tool. Back into scale. I mean move. No, scale. No wonder it was acting weird. I don't know if you can hear the flies, but they're buzzing all over me. We live pretty close to a chicken farm. Don't ever buy a house near a chicken farm, unless you like flies. Back into draw mode. Insert single edge loop. Go into poly group, poly loop. Okay. Q mesh, poly group island. A little bit too far. Hold shift once I start it moving. Alt. Get rid of that poly loop. Edge loop there. Once I got it in a little bit, then I hold shift, take it in, go out of dynamic subdivision, and I'm going to alt that edge. There we go. Kind of from the top. Okay, we need an edge loop around here. 
and then tag these faces here. Excellent. Increase edge mode. Edge loop complete. Now we need single edge. And edge loop partial. Interesting. What's going on this side? Oh yeah, I didn't push it in like that other side. I'm not really concerned about getting it exactly like what's in the reference, just close enough. Go into stitch mode. Ooh. Turn double on. This point. This point. This point. This point. Might as well get these. That looks better. And while well, I group, while I loop, let's see what's going to happen on this here. Scale. Scale plug group violence. Scale edge. Edge loop complete. Let's move these points. Mirror and weld. I'm going to just go ahead and merge that down. This one I'm going to delete. And we've got a situation here, Houston. I think this is a creasing situation. Yep. the crease out of these lines they don't cause any weird pinching points interesting oh that's when I stitch those points together okay okay I got an idea go into bridge two points there we go edge Bridge, bridge edges. Oh, there's something hidden probably. You can't bridge with something hidden. It's still larger than life. <laughs> larger than it's supposed to be. So control shift A will grow all. Mask that off. Bring everything else back, inverse the mask, transpose scale, center it, bring it into about the same size as that nut below it. Okay, clear the mask.
The square selection tool functions differently depending on whether you have Alt pressed or not. When you hold down Alt and use the square selection tool, it will only hide polygons which you select the points of or a point of. If you don't go over any points, it won't pick or hide any polygons. As you can see, you can start in the middle like this. And I'm not crossing any points. Like you can cross even lines. As long as I'm not picking any points, it's not going to delete it. Really handy. Just don't go over any of the corners of what you want to keep. There you go. Mask that off. Bring everything else back. insert. I found that when you want to add an edge loop but you want it to go around the center, go clear out to the edge almost, and it does it. Slide, edge loop complete. Now we're going to insert a plane, just a plain plane. There we go. Take solo mode off. Go into geometry, reconstruct subdivision levels, delete lower, delete higher, move the plane up a little bit. This is going to be the plate eventually, and I need the brackets to come out of it and go in the areas that they're supposed to be. Looks like I need to stretch it a little, holding shift. That'll work. Q mesh. Double. On so you can see the other side. There we go. Now, delete these faces. Edge mode, bridge, two holes. Q mesh, polygroup island should work. Pull this out. Need to change it to single poly. Tap, tap, tap. We got flip normals here. Flat island. Is it doing that? Hmm. Shouldn't have done that. Should it? See if I do this different. <laughs> Try this again. I'm still doing it. It's not supposed to do that. It should have just pulled out the face. It's not snapping either. It's odd. Okay, let's try this. Break off a face. Single poly. Flat island. Hit shift. Check it out. <laughs> Delete hidden. Okay. Key mesh, polygroup island. There we go. Now delete hidden and set it to single poly. Set it to flat island. Single poly. That island. Tag those faces. Set it to single poly. Then align edge. I like this feature. The line edge works really cool. 
when it works, and sometimes it doesn't want to work. Stitch to midpoint. Split point. Ring. Q mesh, polygroup island. Crease, complete edge loop. And it doesn't crease where you want it to. How about partial edge loop? I'm going to turn polygon mode off, do nothing. Edge loops. There we go. Looks like I might need to click weld points. I don't know if you could see what I was seeing. See along this edge here. Now watch when I hit weld points, what happens to it. Bingo. I had to turn up weld points. I turned up to 22 and that seemed to do it. Not too concerned about these edges in here. Well, I might as well increase them. Let's turn that up a little bit higher. Hold points. Helix. Let's see radius. Let's just get rid of this one point there. Close that window and offset. Thickness. Coverage, we want it down to three. Back to offset here. Now let's try that. Make poly mesh go to our model. Pend. Choose that, size, in the deformation palette. I have it on my interface here. We want a mirror. Snap those points. Click the white circle to center it, and I'm scaling it down some more. Back to move. Center it again, rotate. The middle circle pulling up. Looks pretty good. Back in draw mode. Group by normals. Choosing that one. Delete hidden. I'm going to scale it down some more. And it's off center as well. So the reason I've got rid of the ends is because I'm going to mask the edge. Mask edge loop complete so it won't go over to the other side. Okay, I masked that line. Inverse the mask. Then in the deformation palette under tool is inflate. The edge to insert, I to clear the mask. Hold alt. Take that one out too. And let's just inflate it slightly. Go up to light box into tool and grab a polysphere. In geometry, delete higher. Then reconstruct subdivision. I'll go back up one. Delete lower, delete higher. Move. Shift. Clip curve. Mirror in X. Mirror and weld in X. Alt. Q. 
QMesh. You can't tag the faces when polygon mode is set to do nothing. Set the inset, inset region. Tag these faces. Turn double on. Control Shift X to grow it out one. Then inverse the model. Control W. Q mesh, polygroup island. Never seen a tuning peg that looked quite like that, but it's quite all right. Split, split point. Stitch points to end point. Hit spacebar to deselect. I selected the wrong point, so I hit spacebar to deselect it. This one up to here, and this one to there. We still have some kind of funky geometry going on. Smooth often will spread the geometry out so you can figure out what's going on. Undo, undo, undo. I'm going to move this point this direction. Draw size a little bit big, moving more than the points I want to do. Uh, that should be okay. Back to stitch. Align edges there to here. Oh, wow. Interesting. Kind of cool, but <laughs> just wanted to flatten it out. So I'm going to just take clip curve, polygons to inset, and go into scale, edge loop complete, stitch points. Polygon, Q mesh, polygroup island. Append, polysphere, select it, move transpose tool, shift. Something was masked, I guess. Tool, deformation palette, size. B, I, insert cylinder, guesstimate where it's going to go, a little too big, I think. And notice it has a hole in it. It's because it's in dynamic subdivision mode right now. The cylinder has that problem with its geometry. Tool, geometry, modify topography, weld points, transpose move, stretch that puppy out. The modular brush, flat island. Oh yeah, Q mesh. Start to draw out and then hit shift. I'll make that a little bit longer. The whole thing's probably not long enough. Should be okay, I guess. Flat island? No, I want it to be polygroup island. An edge loop. Insert single edge loop. Split. See, it needs to be this one right here. Ring. Stitch. Interesting. A bit of smoothing. Yeah, this isn't working out for me. Split point. Ah. 
this one right here, I think. There we go. Stitch points. Hopefully that'll be all right. Bring it back. Q mesh, like group island. Well, one thing you can do is clip circle center. Press Alt. Hmm. Undo. Control Shift. Control Shift. Change this. There we go. Now inverse that and delete hidden. Split hidden, dynamic subdivision mode, edge, bridge, two holes, one hole, second hole, there we go, something's hiding again, you delete it and then it comes back, something odd going on here, let's undo, undo, delete hidden, ah oh, yes, these holes are not across from each other on an axis. So go on. Delete. Bring everything back. Still kind of warped out. Because there's a crease right here. Crease. Edge. Holding Alt. Much better. Still kind of wonky, but what we need to do then is crease these edges. Voila! Do the same on this side. Edge loop complete. Slide. Edge loop complete. Insert. Alt. That should be fine. Let's go to get a 3D gear. Initialize palette. Outer profile. If you go out of the window and back in, it sharpens the edge, which is what we want in this case. One right there. One right there. There's 16 teeth, so the outer RC, outer radial count, set that to 16. Inner profile and section. Bring those down. I want the width to be wider. About 49 is what I have it at. It'd be 45. That looks pretty good. So for the L divide, we want that to be divisible by the amount of teeth there are. Otherwise, we'll probably end up with odd shaped teeth somewhere. Let's try 96. Not enough. 112. 128. 144. That looks good, I think. Make poly mesh. And that's at 576 points. Could go in with insert. Let me set the Q mesh to do nothing. Holding Alt. Bring my draw size down. Probably help. It won't take very long to delete all these. This really isn't necessary, but I'd show you what's possible. 
and every once in a while it will really help you out. Dealing with topology, there's some really cool tricks you can do. Don't be limited by my imagination. What's happening is I'm hitting the polygon, and since I have polygon set to do nothing, it's deleting an edge, but it's deleting the wrong edge. I guess I was closer to a different edge. So that brought it down from 5-something to 256. You want to go down to polygroups, group by normal, and in geometry, in the crease section, crease by polygroups, and that is the simple way to put creases on it. Snapping it to the straight on view. I'm going to go into brush, insert, half sphere, and draw it out and let's move it over holding shift going to scale click on the white circle to center it holding shift scale it up slightly and then back into move move it on in that should do okay visibility. It's too bad they don't put this in alphabetical order. I'm going to hide points. That hides the unmasked points. And then I'm going to split hidden. Go down. I'm using the arrow key. The down arrow. And let's solo it. Go into draw mode. I want to make this a screw, but these lines are too far apart. So I'm going to have to add edge loops. So back into B, Z, M for Z modeler brush. And I'm going to go into insert edge loop, but I'm going to go multiple edge loops and set the specified resolution to 1. And that'll make it draw an edge loop right in the middle, like so. Then with Alt, tag these faces. Then using Q mesh, polygroup island, doesn't matter, I've got a temporary polygroup set. Push in to about so, hit Alt to change the polygroup. Then I'm going to go into geometry. Crease, crease by polygroup. Get out of that, and then choose this. Control Shift X, bring out everything. Then I'm going to polygroup by normals. In polygroups, groups by normals. And then back up to geometry, crease, polygroups, crease PG. So then when I go hit D this time, I've got nice crisp edges. I've got a crease where we don't want it and say uncrease. Don't really like these corners here. In crease, the crease level set at 15, which means it could be smoothed 15 times before it wouldn't crease anymore. So I'm going to bring this down to, let's just say 2, dynamic subdivision, set the smoothness up to 4, thereabouts. There we go. That took care of that problem. Soften the edge a little as well.